Hello, my name is Paul Setner, and I'm an Applications Engineer with Advanced Solutions Incorporated. And today I just want to go over a question that I'll be focusing on a workflow within Autodesk Inventor 2011 and Vault 2011. Um, and it's kind of a question I've come across recently and, and also in the past, uh, and that is when we're working with library files, uh, similar to what we we talk about when we're working with content center files is when you place content center files or the industry standard content all those files are automatically marked as read-only files what companies can do is set up a custom company content library path within your project file for a library so any file stored inside of this location becomes stamped as, as a, a read-only file as well so things like casters, maybe custom fasteners, whatever it might be, uh, stuff within a company and the company's environment where these are common files we use, files that would rarely if ever change, and as we model them up, as we model them up, we want to make sure that these aren't accidentally being edited uh, and of course being propagated across all the assemblies that are being used in. But sometimes the case does arise five years, ten years down the road when a change to that library part does need to occur. How do we do that? And that'll be what our, our tip today will be discussing. So inside of my vault environment currently, I do have a, a library folder. Here's my active just designs or jobs folder that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit. Uh, but inside of this library uh, folder, I do have just one dummy part in here called library test. This will be the, the file we'll start to work with and, and, and utilize during our, our tip here today. So I do have currently four versions of this file, but we'll kind of take a look at basically how to edit it, kind of go through a, a simple process of, of making that change or making some changes to this part. So it all kind of begins with in the inventor environment in our project file. So if I take a look at my project file, we have a, a workspace directory that's been designated. So I have the actual physical location of the project file. My workspace, so basically where I save all my jobs and, and files for those jobs. And then a focal point of our discussion here is the library path. So you can make as many library paths as you want, but here we just have one called libraries. So and again, anything saved inside of this path via the project file for this active project file, anything saved here is going to be stamped as read-only. When we talk about a vault environment, so again, I guess just quickly notice this is a vault type project. This workflow is valid for both vaulted and non-vaulted environments. But for the vaulted environment, if I come to my vault tab, go to my access panel, my map folders option, just want to take a look at this mapping. So basically the project root of my project file, the top level, is going to the top level root of my vault. Content center files from inventor project file are being mapped to a content center files directory inside a vault this folder here and if I have any library folders designated via my project file I need to tell those where to go inside a vault so it's just being mapped to my library folders here okay so just a little background information about about that mapping now what starts to occur is when I try to open up that file and, and check it out from the vault so here's the library test park from my libraries folder Let's go ahead and try to open it up and we'll check it out. Let's just simply try to edit this extrusion feature and make it a little bit longer. What we'll see is, well, for this project file, it's seeing that library path and it's saying, well, as you're trying to open this up and edit it, you can't because Inventor is giving it some sense of security saying, well, you're in a library path, so of course I can't edit you. I'm marking you as a read-only file since you're in this directory. And that's what we'd expect. But a case may arise where I do want to edit that. I mean, how do I process that? Because you know we have this active live project file that we use within our environment. So what do I do? So the trick is here, and I don't want to say we're kind of tricking Inventor, but that is in essence kind of what we're doing, is we're basically going to create a new project file using some of the same directories as our live existing one except we're not going to call out that library path. If I make a new project file and that library path is not designated, then that will in turn allow me to edit any files that I want because it's not seeing any of those library locations. 
So how we do that is, again, just going to our project file um, options. I'm going to make a new project file. And again, here's where we can say, you know, whether it's a vaulted environment or not, that workflow is valid for both vaults or single user project files. Again, I'll just, if I can create a new single user project file, all I need to do is basically just make sure I'm not creating that library path here. Since it's a, a vault project that we're, we're working with currently, it's going to take a few extra steps, and that just kind of comes into play with our, with our mapping options. Let's so make a new vault project. Let's call this library edits. I save you in the same location that my current live project file is is located. And that is my C drive. I have a vault working folder location. Okay. Oh, it looks like I already have one. Call that. Let's call it something else. Let's call it library edits two. There we go. Okay. Let's change the workspace. So again, it's using the, the same location as our existing uh, live active project file. So again, within this, that's just our designs folder we talked about back within the vault. Okay, so just setting that to my designs. But again, here the trick is basically not doing anything with this library location. I'm not calling out any library folders, so when I'm using this project file, anything within this location is going to be editable. Okay. Now again with the vaulted environment just adds a few steps here in the fact that I need to go back to our mapping folders option and just set up this mapping. So again top level project root of my project file is going to send any fold or any files to what folder inside of the vault. So here we're setting top level to top level, which is my money sign inside a vault. For my content center files, again, that this is a mandatory path we need to set up. I'm just saying any content center files I use, I'm just setting that to my content center files folder inside of the vault. But again, notice no library mapping that needs to occur at this point, which is good. So now if I take a look at my projects, make sure that my edits project file is, is active. And again, try to do an open from vault. Let's go into that library's path and open this, this library test file back up. Let's check it out. Try to process that same change here. So let's edit that feature. Let's again try to change it up to three inches. And we can now see that that edit becomes allowable. I'm now able to edit that vaulted library part using my new vault project file that I've created. Let's save it. Again, it's checked out to me. I have my check mark. It's green, meaning that my version is now newer. And I can see that my new project file just hasn't been added to the vault yet. So let's go ahead and just process this change and, and check these guys in. Simple comment here, just kind of help us verify our change has been processed. Let's go over to the vault and investigate our change. So currently it's at version four. Here's my last comment that was made. Let's do our refresh. Okay, you can now see I'm up to version five. Here's my new comment made my library part longer. It's now up to three inches. And we'll go ahead and, and just process that change. We can now see that that has been enabled the edit has been processed. So for security measures, again, I can go ahead and maybe version that up if we're, depending on what flavor of, of vault we're using, change our states, change our categories perhaps. Uh, but again, to prevent any end users from, from accessing that, again, make sure that maybe you lock down that project file. Make sure that um, only those who need to be aware of this at an administrative level are aware of that process. If I go back and enter in my project files, go ahead and change this back to my designs IPJ file. Come back into the vault, let's open that library file back up. Okay, let's try to check it out and make a change. 
And here I can see that the extrusion length is again three inches. Let's say I want to change it back to two. I'm back to Inventor taking control over the security of these files and now being managed the way I want them to. So again, where is the case where we might want to edit some of those library files, but again, the time may come where some of those changes do need to be processed. And hopefully this tip helps you understand that workflow and the workaround to enable that, that process to occur. Again, thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you uh, with our next tip. Thank you.